What is going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 66 of the YAMCast. The YAMCast now has its own route designated in the United States. It's also subject to many prequel memes, as you said before. Mm -hmm. Uh, Today, we've got news of a brand new Yamaha. Well, new-ish, but it's a new XSR900 we're going to be chatting a little bit about. We've also got news from Ducati, their Multistrada line. Uh, We've also got news from one that we've been following for a long time here in the form of Norton, Going to see mm-hmm. a super bike that they may or may not be rolling out. Some news on there. Uh, we've also got our call in portion where today we're going to be chatting what is it going to take to save American motorcycling? The boys are going to call in. We're going to talk about what it's going to mean for American motorcyclists to change and evolve and what the bikes can do and all that sort of stuff. And then finally, we've got a meme contest dunking on none other than Honda which I'm very excited about. I hope to see some Marquez memes in there. I think we will. Oh, yeah. Stick around. It's going to be a good one. All righty, Spite, load us up on our first bit of news. What do we got? The first bit of news is an MT-09 you can look at. Ooh. This is the new XSR 900. Let me share the screen here so that we can see it in post. It's, um, It's interesting. I don't... First gut impression, does this look like an XSR 900 to you? To me, it does, and I've seen this bike for the past few days now, and the thing that just has shocked me is everybody is completely butthurt about the seat. What do you think about the seat? So I saw the seat, and I was like, that doesn't look like an XSR seat to me. Yeah. It doesn't look like the normal kind of flat, planky seat. Yeah. I Honestly, it doesn't really shout XSR to me. Um, It kind of just looks like a handsome MT-09. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. I'm totally fine with. Yeah, because the MT-09s, I can't do it. (laughs) This is a butt-ugly motorcycle. Its head is too far up, and it's the weird Cyclops thing. I can't do it. The only thing that saves the MT-10 is the fact that it has that R1 engine. Yes. That's the only thing that it's got. And well, now... We will we will reiterate, like we said that one Yamcast, if Yamaha can make an XR1 that's the done. MT-10... Done. 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 <laughs> I will buy it. I want it. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Just please. 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 Do it. Please. <laughs> All right. Enough. All right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this, this actually looks really good. I like it. I think I like it looks it great. Yeah, let's see us from some other angles here before we dive into the specs a little bit on it. Uh, so there it is in motion. Single um, round headlight, classic looking. Mm-hmm. The other side, uh, from the tail, you can actually see the, uh, it's almost got that like new rage cycles from the yeah. factory, which is cool. It's got a kind of 80s inspired look about it. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it looks more like... Um, it to me it didn't look like an XSR 900 so much as it looks like somebody took an MT09 and they modified it to look a little bit retro. Yeah, which I'm okay with. Uh, I I can see why some people might get butt hurt, but I actually do like the fact that it's got a seat scoop here because the MT09 will you know it, an ass shelf is helpful on that motorcycle. Lord knows you need it on that platform. So. It's a handsome bike. I, I love the lookout from the cockpit. Yeah, that looks Really, great. really nice. And the one thing we want to mention here, as I'm already seeing, this bike is highly based on the brand new MT-09. So it's got mm-hmm. the brand new MT-09 frame. It's got the same uh, brand new, what is it, an 898cc triple? Yep. Is that right? Making slightly more horsepower, a little more torque, really just a kind of Euro 5 update on that motor. They didn't need to change the motor. Got the uh, new dash. Got the new dash the suite of electronics, the new front suspension, the new geometry from the bike. And one thing I read on the article earlier is it uh, has a bit of a longer swing arm than the original or the new MT-09. So it's got a slightly longer swing arm than that bike, but I am told will still flick in nice and fun. Okay, so now the XSR gains some lighter and latest MT-09, but with slightly lower headstock for a lower handlebar position uh, and a 55 millimeter longer swing arm to improve stability. Okay. I bet you it still rips wheelies like nobody's business. Yeah, 119 brake horsepower. That is a lot. That's very much. And Um, I think it's like 67 foot-pounds of torque or something. It's... And just the way that engine makes its power is ridiculous. I mean, why couldn't they just make it 69? I know. Because <laughs> that's what the that's what the MT-09 is now. It's 69 foot-pounds of torque. I think it is, yeah. At least the old one was 69. Yeah. Which is the perfect number it's for a, the MT-09. It's a perfect number. Yeah. 
I like the the gold finished uh, KYB forks as well. The gold finish on the forks and the gold lines. Yeah, and they the, match. The it wheels. makes my brain feel good. This is I I normally am not one to go for blue motorcycles. Yeah, it's just not my thing. You're anti Suzuki. I understand. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but this is a really handsome blue motorcycle. The paint yeah. looks great, at least in the photos. And there's somebody ripping a big fat wheelie on it. Yep. So. Well, that's the MT-09. That's the new one, yeah, the SP. I wonder if they'll make an SP version of this. They never do, and I feel like they're missing out by doing that, because I think a lot of people would really love an XSR900 SP, because that's just about a damn near perfect triple-cylinder street bike Yeah, that will go toe-to-toe with something like the Street Triple RS from Triumph. What's the price on the new MT-09? The new MT-09, I believe, is a little over ten grand, if it's I like remember 10, correctly. 5? I think it's ten five or ten four nine nine or something like that for the non SP version. Twenty twenty one price. Philippines. Not Philipp- Why does it always auto fill <laughs> Philippines? Okay, let's try that again. Uh, holy. Ninety three really? ninety nine for a twenty twenty one. God damn! If you that's, can find them, that's a hell of a deal. What's crazy is in twenty thirteen when they came out, they were seventy nine hundred bucks. <laughs> Yo, <Yep>. that's insane. <laughs> that was so much bike for the dollar. That's absolutely crazy. <laughs> Considering didn't... that the twenty twenty one MTO seven is now seventy six hundred dollars. Thinking about a twenty thirteen MTO nine brand new being seventy nine hundred bucks, you're just like, how? <laughs> They specifically designed it to be super duper cheap, but yeah. I mean, it felt like it. Yeah, it did. And I, I'm really, really curious to ride the new MT-09s because I haven't ridden them yet. Yeah. And everyone says they're a lot of fun. And a lot of the hangups I have about the platform, having owned one of the MT-09 bikes, uh, two of them actually, um, has been fixed, which is cool. I'm hoping that it still has a little bit of that MT-09 character. Yeah. Because that's it for... Maybe maybe I'm uh, misconstruing character and badness in that typical yeah. Eurobike way, but yeah. I the the MT09 is a uh, it's an interesting motorcycle experience. Yeah, and I kind of want the new MT09 to not feel so homogenized. I think the uh, MT09 just provides such a unique motorcycling experience, especially the older one. It was mm-hmm. so upright, so torquey, kind of motardy. You're like, what? the hell is this bike because the riding stance is so funny yeah and the you like the tank is so flat and wide it's such a weird bike yeah but But just an absolute ball to ride Mm -hmm. um yeah so very handsome update here for yamaha for the xsr 900 we knew it was coming uh i wonder if they're gonna make a new xsr 700 i doubt it honestly which I mean, they'd be silly not to because Cowie just released that new Z650 RS. They should. The new MT-07 is, uh, I mean, functionally anything, it's the though. same. Yeah. So theoretically you could get away with just selling the old one. Yeah. But I don't know. Give it Give it the, I still think they need to put the front end from the R7 on the MT-07. Totally. And just call it an MT-07R and be done. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. That would be a perfect little naked bike. Like just about perfect. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think the MT-07 is going to turn into one of those bikes that uh, is going to fall into kind of the Suzuki trap of things. I don't think it's going to change for a long, long time. Nope. I think that bike might run as is for 15 years. Don't don't mess with success. Yeah. I mean, that... It's and, almost 10 years old right now. It's almost perfect as it is right now for what it is. Kinda, yeah. It's a really good bike. <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah. It's hard to go wrong. Yeah. Um, now we're going to get comments, people telling us that we're Yamaha simps. Mm, Yamaha's fine. They make, they yeah. just make fun motorcycles, guys. They're very fun and good. So That's why we like them. Moving on to another manufacturer that makes fun and good motorcycles that we love simping for every once in a while, too. We have a new-ish Multistrada, right? Yep. So, uh, new Ducati Multistrada V2 which is based so they did have the old 950 Mm -hmm. uh this is based on the 937 that is in the hyper yep and is that the monster yeah in the monster yep um and they're saying this is 225 kilograms wet which 225 convert to freedom units 2.2 is 495 pounds wet and ready to ride which is nice terrible um, now, the thing I'm liking that I'm seeing here, 
Uh, and I'm sure the 950 was like this, but I can't remember off the top of my head. This is not an adventure bike. Nope. It's a sport touring bike. It's not trying to be some off-roady thing. It's not, you don't have press photos of people jumping these in the Baja and shit. Mm -hmm. It's a touring bike. We know what it is. Enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. You know, it's on 17s. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And I think that allows Ducati to actually make the bike they want, yes. which is one that we're going to talk about in a little bit, yeah. I think. Uh, but this is a good-looking motorcycle. I actually kind of enjoy the look of this thing. Um, and we've got some spectacles on it down here, if I can find them. So there we've got that 937 with uh, 111 brake horsepower and 71 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I think those are the exact same numbers as the Monster and the Hyper Motard as well. Which makes this just a little bit heavier and a little bit slower, but... So much more comfortable, though. Yeah. Uh, people on chat are saying that the screen is not showing. The screen is not showing. It is not showing. I must have pushed a button. There we go. It's showing now. Sorry, guys. Um, let me close this down. All right. So, what do we got in here? We've got the uh, full TFT dash. Which, nice. Uh, obviously, Ducati's going to put that on there. I mean, it's 14000 England money. Yep, so um, probably about sixteen grand USD. Uh, what I'm kind of surprised by lately, and maybe there's something that motorcycle manufacturers know that we don't, which is a lot of things, let's be honest, but I'm seeing, like, every other day there's a new sport touring bike. What is going on in that segment? You that got the new point. the new Tiger 660, the sport mm -hmm. touring bike. We have the the MV in yep. here, the sport touring bike. That There's ugly this ugly ass thing. Honda we There's talked the about. The ugly Honda. There's the the Dixer, uh, the GSX S1000 GT or whatever, which apparently has a lot of hype behind it because people Michael won't stop Neves, asking Michael Neves from MCN said it's one of the best Suzuki he's ridden in years. I was like, "Okay, like what?" So there's I think Maybe we're not seeing this trend because we are not sport touring dads yet. We yet. will we will evolve into that one day. But, uh, you know, maybe this market is really growing and popping because I think people are, maybe it's the next evolution of like, they did like dumb crotch rockets, then they did naked bikes. And they're like, screw it. Give me a windscreen. Give me bags. I just, you know what? Let me just live my life. Yep. Maybe that's it. I mean, yeah, I could see that. It's it's a little bit sad, and I hope that's not the case. But, <laughs> you know, I I like the fact that they're letting these motorcycles just be what they're designing them to be. Yeah. Uh, they're not trying to make it some, you know, hard enduro like we said before. Uh, don't sit there and tell me a Multistrada V4 is some off-road crusher. Don't, mm -mm. don't tell me that. And you know what? Sport touring, it, I think that... If I had to guess as to why sport touring is a thing now is because people want to go out and they want to get on the open road after, you know, being locked up for a while. Maybe that's it. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. But, you know, this this doesn't just happen overnight. It's not like they were like, oh, shit, we got to get one out like now. Yeah, no. no this they've, was, they've been making sport touring bikes for a while. So it's like some recent resurgence. Yeah, I mean, that has to be because I'm seeing so many new bikes that are in this sport touring category. This one obviously is a bit more bigger and expensive than something like the Tiger 660 or the V-Strom 650. But, you know, if you want that more, a little bit more premium and you don't want to go whole hog and buy a $24,000, you know, V4 multi, you mm -hmm. can get the V2 multi and I bet you it's like 80% as good. And it'll sound great. It'll sound really nice. Yeah. Now, I cannot tell what is happening in this picture. I don't know what part is the exhaust and what part is the swing arm and where the bread box is. <laughs> this is a, there's something going on here, and I don't understand it's it. It's like an M.C. Escher drawing where you don't quite know where things end and begin. Like, what, why is this a hanger bolt here? <laughs> that, with no yeah, there's nothing bolted up there. <laughs> like, And why is the like foot peg coming out on top of the where exhaust? Where is the and foot peg coming out of? There's so many, there's so many things things that i'm not understanding here also why are new ducatis if you squint it could be an mt bike well they actually here we have the goo gt yeah as, that's another one that's the like someone called it the best bike of the year or something like that mm -hmm. what's going on sport touring boys they're they're evolving coming I, out of nowhere what do you want to bet it's just that the all of the uh 
moto journos out there are reaching the age where they just desire <laughs> sport touring bikes and hey, they're like I've, oh wait a minute i'm not gonna lie actually really good. i've been to some press events and those guys are all i quite a bit older than i am let's just put it that way <laughs> Quite a bit older, and all getting all getting excited about their V Stroms. I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. The NT eleven hundred is so ugly. Oh, dude, it's so ugly. That thing was just, that thing. That's one of the ugliest bikes I've seen in a minute. But ugly. Yeah. Maybe maybe one day maybe next year because we're going to try a bunch of new stuff next year. Maybe we'll, we'll just do we'll just grab a sport touring bike and see what happens. You know. No. It's like this is our new giveaway bike. Deal with it. <laughs> Let's and then it's just tanks. <laughs> Hey, let's just do the Jixus 1000 because at least if that's if that one is you know too sport touringy, then we can save it by being like it's a K5. So come on, it's a K5. Yeah, but it, there's also another multi, isn't there? Yes. So, uh, multi Pikes Peak yeah. edition, which <laughs> they got uh, backing it in at the track. You gotta love it. You gotta love some dude backing in a 527 pound supposedly ADV bike. <laughs> <laughs> on the track but i mean like look at this. so this is just God, full on sport touring mode goliath here. of a motorcycle uh yeah i mean that's they they've just succumbed it's like take the take the friggin 1921s off get that crap off it put it on 17s call it a day you yes. know yeah yeah and it's gonna be better for it it's actually gonna be like comfortable to ride i stuff. think so too uh but of course it's got you know your olin's uh super smart stuff yeah uh, uh, electronic Brembo style lemma forks, calipers all that good stuff so that you can do the Pikes Peak thing and it costs an eye-watering $28,995 yep that's a whole lot of coin for uh, a motorcycle um, well let me ask you if so this is perhaps the Apex Predator sport touring bike mm -hmm. if you had to get a sport touring bike which one would you get Ninja or not the Ninja the uh, the H two S two S that's SXSC. not really a sport touring bike it's got saddlebags man I know but it's like does it have handlebars or clip ons it's got I think it's got like upright clip ons like the Pulling up it's got like right. heli risers or something yeah so I don't see what Kawasaki says the H two S X, -X E is S E. Luxury and power supercharge your journey. See, it's got those like weird. He is kind of up, right? Yeah. Up. What do, what do they categorize it as? Uh, like luxury performance. If we go under models, where where is it in the model lineup? Boy, here. So let's go to Kawasaki. Hey, you motorcycle, gotta go to motorcycle. Ninja. It's since under Z because it's a street bike. No, it'll be under Ninja. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Uh, H two S X. There it is up at the top. Oh, yep. There it is. Hypersport. Hyper sport. It's not sport touring. Go back. Is that go go back really quick? Okay. Let's scroll down. What do they have for sport touring? I bet the, it's the Ninja Motorcycle. 1000, right? Ninja Sport Super Sport. They just put the SX under sport. <laughs> Damn it, Kawasaki! You're too dumb. <laughs> Do you want sport, <laughs> super sport, or hyper sport? You want little, you want little fast or a lot of fast? What do you want? <laughs> I mean, that's a fair way to categorize it. I love how they put the ZX14 under super sport, and they're just like our our hyper sports are our supercharged offerings. Why is the H2 thirty thousand? I didn't realize it was thirty oh, yeah. grand. Oh yeah! Holy shit! Yeah, dude. that's why I'm saying get a turbo Busa. It's half the price. You could get two turbo boosters <laughs> for that. I did not realize it was yeah. thirty. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's super different from the uh, ZH2. It, it's yeah. a different frame. It's got all kinds of different stuff. It makes two forty from factories. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but anyways, we're not here to talk about turbo boosts in H2. I love how we've just devolved here. But what would you, if you had to get a sport touring bike, what would you get? That's not a sport touring bike. The H2SX is not, you can't do that. Boosa. <laughs> You're not understanding the assignment. Uh, okay, if I have to actually pick a sport touring motorcycle, yes. it'd probably be like the Duke GT. The Super Duke GT. There you go. That's fair. Yeah, because um, it's upright. It's really torquey. It's yep. bags. It's big and heavy, sorta, but yeah. it's still a duke under yep. the skin. So I that forgot that bike exists. That's a that's a cool bike. Yeah. Uh, how about you? What would I get? Um, Desert X. 
Well, it's not a sport. It's an adventure bike. I might get the Multi V too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, I, you know, I'd save myself some cash over the V four. I think I'd like it. I think it'd be nice. Sure, get the Multi V too. Why not? Yeah, it's not a bad choice. Now everyone's gonna screen cap that. Be like, that's his choice for sport touring for all time. He said the Multi V two. <laughs> I haven't even written it. You guys relax. What's our last bit of news, though, Sprite? Right, so our last bit of news we've been talking about on and off for a long time. Uh, and it is Norton Motorcycles V4 Superbike that they have been working on for a long time. Yeah, I think long, I, long time. I think I saw like a chrome version of this bike at the Isle of Man TT. There's right? a chrome version. There's an all carbon version. Yep. Uh, and now we have an actual uh, well, a rendering of yeah. it because it's still not a real thing yet. <laughs> But they're getting closer, is what they're claiming, and we actually have some numbers on it this time. The, let's let's take a look at the design for a moment. Um, I feel like it's a blend of like Energica a little bit with the eyeballs. Kind of yeah. looks Energica esque to me. Um, with sound, with and yeah, soul. With, with quite a bit of sound. Um, Single sided swing arm and V four kind of mm-hmm. gives me a you know Ducati, Ducati vibe. vibe. This is straight off of uh, Mir. Well, it doesn't have the two pipes, but this is like yeah. G- uh, Suzuki GP right there. Full on GP bike style stuff. Which is pretty freaking sweet. I love the look of those. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome. It's an interesting motorcycle to I don't, look I at. I don't love the look of it, to be perfectly honest. It's I a think little the, fr- the front's a little droopy. It's like it's like uh, kind of melts at the bottom a little bit, like a snow cone. Yeah, it's like somebody put a. Um, a, a plastic motorcycle in the microwave for a little too long yeah yeah it's a little droopy uh yeah the quilted seats interesting but what Mm -hmm. what are the numbers the numbers the numbers so the numbers we have here uh are 1200 cc 72 72 degree v4 so a big engine yeah like real big and pushing uh to 185 brake horsepower pathetic that is kind of pathetic <laughs> out of a 1200. <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, you've got 200 extra cubes over the blade and you're making 30 less horsepower. Go uh, back to the... Fa- go, go, go back to the drawing board. Yep. Get you your finger follower rocker arms. Get your t- whatever the hell titanium inlet valves. I can't remember all the shit that the Fireblade has on it, but... <laughs> you need you need like a just degree to understand the Fireblade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is making 92 and a half foot pounds of torque. So we'll call that an even 93. Yeah. More than your average leader bike nowadays, but that's about RSV four, you know? Yeah. But to be honest, cause I've ridden the RSV four at Coda, there's been few things I've ridden that pull like that bike, uh, <laughs> at the back straight of Coda, that was genuinely scary to get it into deep into fifth. Um, <laughs> So, if this thing's anything like that, which is my kind of barometer for a V4 superbike, it, I mean, it's not going to be slow, let's be honest. No. And the clientele for this probably will buy it no matter what the price is, no matter what the power is, because they mm-hmm. want it just for the kind of panache of saying, like, I own a Norton V4 SF, SV, what is SV. it? SV. Because uh, they don't even have pricing on it yet, right? Nope. So that's the thing here. We have, uh, if you remember in the background, Norton was basically like building motorcycles in like a flex space office yes. <laughs> in England somewhere. Yeah. And then they went bankrupt again. Shocker. Yep. Uh, and they were bought by an Indian company. I think the same company that runs. Is it TVS? Like, it's either TVS or Bajaj. Yeah. The one that runs uh, the. Um, Oh, shoot. They make the BMW bikes, right? The BMW and the 390 KTMs. Yeah. Um, I think that's the company that owns them now. And you'll notice that it's still got the English flag on the tail. Okay. So it's still kind of like, you know, they. I guess they're still trying to make it an English yeah. brand. but Hanging on those laurels a little bit, you know? But, I mean, what are the odds that this actually sees the light of day? This is the third time we've talked about this now on the Yamcast over a year. And each time it's been like, so the first time I was like, look at these crazy numbers. And then the second time I was like, well, okay. the backers may not be getting their motorcycles now. Yeah. And now the numbers are coming back down a little bit. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I'd give it like a 30% chance of ever seeing the light of day. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
it kind of Norton kind of feels a little bit like Buell to me, where it's kind of like will they, won't they, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's this back and forth. Uh, yeah, it'd, it'd be cool if it comes out. Uh, I think the superbike world nowadays is ridiculously competitive. So would it even try to compete? I mean, it's twelve hundred cc. No, I mean it's not. It's not homologated or anything. No. It's not going to go racing. Maybe it would go racing at something like the Isle of Man, where I don't think the regulations are as strict as like uh, FIM sanctioned events and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it could do kind of like one-off events like that. But uh, beyond just being a toy for rich people, yeah, I don't know. And I, they've already paid for it, so they're just waiting <laughs> for it to come, I suppose. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the just update. The V4 Norton still exists in potentia. Yeah, it's a very pretty bike in... Something tells me it might be our thumbnail because I'm sure that'll get some clicks, but we'll we'll see whenever we finish up the Yamcast. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, folks, that's going to wrap up the news for today. We're now going to move over to the call-in portion of our podcast. Stick around. Alrighty, folks, this is normally the part of the podcast where we do our call-in section. However, we are having some technical difficulties with our server, and we cannot quite figure out why we can't hear our boys calling us in, but normally you'd be able to call into the Yamcast, hang out with us, you join up over on yamminoob.co on our Discord server, but for today, they're going to be DMing us their thoughts and concerns about American motorcycles. We're chatting today about what it would take for American bikes to be on the forefront again, what we'd like to see from them. And so we're going to start off with my thoughts, Spite's thoughts, and then everyone's thoughts on Discord. So if you're on Discord and you've got something you want to say about American motorcycles and something you'd like to change, go ahead and shoot Spite a DM. I will read your DM out loud, and we'll go from there. I feel like I've talked a lot, so why don't you lead us off with what you think needs to change with American motorcycles. I feel like we need a desire to go racing beyond american style racing uh Agreed. we need to not it, like okay king of the baggers is funny yeah in a, in a more of like look at the look at the weird kid it's a bit of a gimmick yeah i i'd like to see an american company get like really hardcore into racing and actually you know compete either in like world Superbike or you know hell gp would be i, I can't i awesome. can't help but laugh and imagine like a harley world Superbike team how awesome would that be though it'd be really cool but you know? yeah because they had the vr 1000 years ago now yeah uh but it, i in a world where racing drives enthusiast interest i can't think of anything Ooh. else that we could do i have an idea all right so the FIM recently changed their super sport homologation rules to include stuff like the V2, the 765, the mm-hmm. bigger displacement bikes, the MV Agustas. What if Harley made a fully fared Rev Max based on the 975 twin, or maybe a little smaller to be more like the Ducati, basically made like an American Panigale V2, and then that they went racing in super awesome. sport with it. That would be sweet. That would be awesome. Because if they wanted to go to World Superbike, they'd have to make a V4. And if they wanted to go to GP, they'd also have to make a V4. Mm -hmm. They have not made a V4. No. (laughs) A Harley V4 (laughs) sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. But, I, you know, honestly, I'd really like to see that world where they go racing and actually take it seriously. Yes. Because, again, King of the Baggers, they were playing it in the Harley footprint in Sturgis. Everybody's like, oh, that's neat. (laughs) <laughs> this Yamcast is cursed. <laughs> Why did that happen? <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Funk. <laughs> um, so I, I honestly think that it's... A, American motorcycling needs to reinvigorate its passion with racing. Yeah. And it's a bummer because you remember back... Not that you remember, but you can recall back to a time in like the 70s and 80s where we had these badass flat track racers and circuit racers who could go to Europe and just dominate because we had such an infrastructure for racing. That is not happening at all today at all anymore. No. And, you know, how cool... uh, This is still one thing... And I said it in my vlog in Sturgis... Be like, the one thing that I'd like to see is like an RC8R style motorcycle with the bar and shield big on the side. That'd be badass. That would be so cool. You yeah. walk out and you'd be like, oh, what the hell is that it's, motorcycle it's right It's my there? Harley Superbike. It's a Harley, it's a Harley <laughs> Davidson. How awesome would that be? Yeah, that would be very cool. Um, for me personally, uh, I totally agree with your point, and that's what I was going to say, but if I take another spin on it, 
we need an American manufacturer to be a full line manufacturer. Yes. We need one of them, either Indian, Harley, whoever, and it takes so much R and D, but we need like like how Yamaha makes a bike for everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. They've got your WRs, your trail bikes, your cross country bikes, your MX bikes, your super bikes, your sport bikes, your touring bikes. They make everything, right? Mm-hmm. I think we need to stop pigeonholing American motorcycles to be this thing where it's like, oh, we make, you know, kind of sporty-ish bikes and lots of cruisers because, oh my God, the heritage. You can't get rid of and the heritage. And everything has V-twin. This reminds me of, and it's not bike-related, but I recently saw news that uh, Corvette launched their new Z06. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about this? I've, I have saw a commercial for it. Dude, it's crazy. So the new Corvette is like mid-engined, right, which mm-hmm. is really crazy. But the Z06 is now a 5.5 liter flat plane crank V8 that revs to 8,700 RPM, and it sounds like a freaking Ferrari, you hmm. know? And I'm like, GM made this car? You know, like, this is awesome. But they did it because they went racing at Le Mans stuff, right? So going back to what you were saying, Harley Davidson's got to get back into racing and have that technology drive their progress. So mm-hmm. I think we need a full line manufacturer. They need to go racing and they need to have some bikes in the five to seven thousand dollar price point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't fifteen thousand dollars for a sportster is a lot of money. Yeah. The sportster's meant to be like your entry level point to the brand. <laughs> LOL. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um so yeah, I, I would love to see five to seven thousand dollar bikes. You know, good little entry level bikes, going racing, that sort of thing. But let's see what the Discord boys have to say. Let's see what the boys have to say. So we've got Eerie Bobble here, Bubble, who tried to call in. We're not doing call-ins. Uh, California five five six says, "I want to see American made dirt bikes that can compete with the big four and the Euros." Man, that would be killer, especially since Harley Davidson has history making dirt bikes. It was a long time ago, but, yeah. you know, they were like steel cradle frames and stuff back then. But, hey, the they... DRZ is still a steel cradle frame. <laughs> <laughs> we all know how competitive that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that, too. Yeah, and, and dirt bikes are so big right now. Like, people mm-hmm. love off-road stuff right now that... I mean, Triumph's doing it. They're just like, screw it. We're going to make motocross bikes. I was like, what? (laughs) It's just one of those like... Yeah, like, like, what? what? They got Ricky Carmichael and making dirt bikes? (laughs) Why couldn't Harley Davidson do that? Why couldn't they grab... Why can't they grab Paul Taurus and be like, check it out. We're we're making... (laughs) We're making a 450, you know? Then the Harley people would be just as insufferable as Uh, T7 people. Yes, they would. We can't have that. I agree with uh, California here. We make uh, American-made dirt bikes. That'd be cool. So next up, we've got uh, input from C-Money Diesel here. Yeah. C-Money Diesel says, the problem with American motorcycle companies is a lack of entry-level bikes. Completely agree. Yes. You'd have to go in the used market to get a Sportster in that five dollars to $7,000 range. You Mm -hmm. can't go to any Indian Harley, any American dealership and buy a bike like you could at Yamaha, you know? No, and so I, if I'm not mistaken, the Scout 60 is $8,900 and it's a thousand cc's yeah, and I mean, like uh, 80-ish horsepower. Yeah, and it's like a big lumpy cruiser thing. Like it's not, not a beginner bike. No, I would love to see like a 400-ish to 650-ish bike that cost about $6,500, $7,000. Yeah, pounds. That weighs about 430 pounds. Just like Triumph did it with the Trident, you know? I I think what Triumph is doing, Harley should take a page out of that book. Yes. They're more closely resembling a full-line manufacturer that is still kind of premium, but Mm -hmm. has something for new people. So yeah, yeah. entry-level bikes, totally. Uh, Next we got... W. Yaley, I'm not sure. Wally. How to say that. Wally. He says, Hey guys, I think Harley needs to revive the VR1000 and get into World Superbike. They also need to make the RevMax engine sound gooder because right now it sounds like a 180 degree P twin. Also, just make the effing Bronx as a naked companion to the VR1000. Totally. Yes. Totally. Have a super bike and naked bike, you know, brother sister combination. Those are always fun. MT10 R1. Boom. Done. Yeah. Not like those are one of the most competitive markets in motorcycling, but hey, if Harley Davidson, they knocked it pretty good with the Pan Am, they could probably make something pretty sick with the, a VR1000 platform. If they put their mind to it, I they can thoroughly do it. believe in Harley Davidson. I really do. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Matthew here. 
Matthew here with a more interesting take. He says, less car-centric infrastructure, more development on lane splitting and traffic filtering legality, more cool, simple, and cheap bikes. Electric bikes might help this in the future, question mark. I, man, it's tough because America's literally built around the friggin' car. You know, mm-hmm. it'd be hard to make it less car-centric because we just have so much space, open highways, people love their vehicles here. I myself own a gigantic truck, <laughs> right? Like, I'd be lying if I said I didn't love my truck. So... That one's tough, I'd say. Like, I went to Houston, the land of the Hayabusa and, the, like, the 19-lane highway. Yeah. And I didn't see one Busa. Oh, bummer. I was so sad. I was like, oh, I'm going to Houston. This is this place is a pollen-soaked, smelly hellhole <laughs> with traffic, but I'm going to see a Busa today. And there wasn't a single Busa. Let me ask you this. What time of day were you out? Uh, I was out both at, like, kind of 9 o'clock and... Morning or night? At night. Oh, you should have seen a Busa. I should have seen a yeah, Busa then, but there wasn't one. I saw a couple ZX-14s when I went down to Houston not I wanted, too long ago. I wanted like, it to be nine feet long and with lights and yeah. chrome, and I was like, oh, <laughs> that was the whole point. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think we if we could definitely get some lane splitting and filtering legality, that'd yeah. be cool. Truth be told, I know you and I both filter already whenever possible. Mm-hmm. Yesterday's ride was fun. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's it's just so fun being like traffic doesn't exist to me, and you just like I love when Google's like, oh, it's going to take you forty minutes to go home. I'm like the hell, it's going to take me forty <laughs> minutes. I was riding on the shoulder doing crazy, shit, but yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Next up, we've got Kilroy's input here. All right, Kilroy here says, as far as the Yam clan is concerned, is it likely or even possible that Harley or Indian would ever pursue true sport bikes? If either could just make a relatively affordable sport bike, I'd feel like they'd sell really well to both the near boomers and the little zoomer squids. Just look at how hyped the Livewire was and how hyped the FTR still is. That's fair. Um, maybe they don't need to make a true blue, fully fared, homologated, fire-breathing race bike. Just make a good, affordable naked bike. People will probably buy into it. Yeah, I mean, th- that was one thing that kind of surprised me when I was in Sturgis is how many FTRs I saw. There yeah. were a lot of FTR 1200s there, and they weren't the uh, flat tracky one. They were the, the sport one. Yep. Um, and that sport one handles real good. But again, my heart is like, oh, I just want to see him go racing because I want to, I just want to be sitting there waving the American flag at Coda. Yeah. You know? But yeah. I, uh, I, I totally agree. I think if either Indian or Harley could make a relatively affordable sport bike, it would totally sell well. And it doesn't even have to be like a super cost competitive MT-07 style bike because people are willing to spend a little bit more of a premium in that kind of Ducati monster range yeah. to, to get a, a naked bike from an American maker for sure. Because it's, it's a Harley Davidson. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of, as much as it's kind of corny, there is a lot in that brand name. What is it? One in every three bikes sold in the U.S. is a Harley, They're, which is mind-boggling to me. But I, I have a real soft spot for Harley Davidson, but I'm I feel like I'm probably one of their more hopeful critics. I would say I think so. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Sal Links. Uh, Salinex or Salinx uh, says, how about an American company making an actual non-Americanized motorcycle for each of the established categories of motorcycling? Yep. Full line manufacturer. Full line manufacturer. Totally agree. I think the one thing holding back a lot of companies from doing that is the insane R&D cost it would take to get into each single category. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes you wonder how you know, companies like the big four did it when they did it. I guess they've just been doing it for so long and they've been in every category for so long. They've had the R&D paid for years ago, right? Yeah. Like, how much marginally does it cost Yamaha to, like, update their two-stroke motocross bikes? It can't be very much. I mean, I got to imagine that the year-over-year changes on those motorcycles are minimal, to say the least. Yeah, it was a big deal whenever Yamaha did update their two-stroke bikes, like, from 10 years ago or something. People were like, holy shit, they, like, added some new R&D to that bike, because... What's crazy, especially with the off-road bikes, some people buy like old 90s like two-strokes and they're just as good as some of the new ones after mm-hmm. like some couple mods and fixes here and there. It's not like sport bikes where it's like, okay, like a 1994 R- or a R7 or whatever, or a ZX7, not an R7 because it was a homologated bike, versus like a brand spanking new R6. Very different. Yep. Yeah. Or they could just do Suzuki. Bold new graphics. Bold new graphics, baby. <laughs> Printing money on those DR650s. Oh, man. Uh, next up, we got Hacksaw SF. 
uh, Hacksaw says, I'd like to see Harley start a sister company that makes sport bikes, kind of like Buell back in the day, but better, and sell them in dealerships that aren't Harley exclusive. That could be cool, kind of like you have like a like a ride now where you've mm-hmm. got like a bunch of brands under one roof selling bikes. Maybe you've just got like another American brand in there getting sold too. The only Maybe thing work. that the only thing that I see about that is so Harley spun Livewire into its own thing, and I think there's a Livewire two yeah. that has been talked about. Has anybody heard anything about that? Like I don't know. It's I would caution them against starting their own company. I feel like they need to do it as Harley Davidson. I think so too. I think that's one of the reasons Buell didn't do so well because they were like what the hell's a buell yeah what's a buell what's this like you should have just called it a harley and been done with it and gave it full harley support you Mm -hmm. know imagine if they did that back in the day (sighs) where harley could be now because that buell we rode like i still think about it it was pretty good it handled well the engine was a dog but (laughs) (laughs) it was that like rotted out sportster engine that sucked that engine sucked but i could see the potential you know Mm. I could really see the potential. I thought it handled better than the MT-09 that we rode back to back. Hell yeah. I was like, this is a sweet little bike. Mm-hmm. It, it revs up slow as <laughs> but <laughs> it good. revs It revs up slow and it holds on to revs for so long. Yeah. The, was, it travels like that long. Such a dog. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got Dreadnought Saz, who's got a... Kawasaki related question says why does Kawasaki seem to compete with themselves in so many categories the bikes are definitely different Ninja 1000 versus ZX10 but are there really that many buyers out there getting an H2 ZX14 ZH2 ZX10 or is it just the same group of us buying 10 damn bikes I really think that each of those bikes is a completely different clientele yep uh a ZX14 guy is a ZX14 guy. He's yep. not interested in H2s. He's not interested in the ZX10. He knows what he wants. Vice versa for all the other ones, right? Yep. Yeah. So they're they're not really. It's not cross pollinating so much. Yeah. Unlike Honda, that's making that NT1100 that basically is an Africa twin. <sighs> and I'm like, you're definitely going to eat up some cannibalize some sales on Why? those. Why? I don't know. They know something about sport touring that we don't. I don't know. <laughs> what if sport touring accidentally kills ADV bikes? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I'd love it if all these ADV losers finally jumped on sport tourings and they were like, oh, this is what we actually wanted uh, this whole time. Uh, Dreadnought updated us here and he said, I'm a ZX14 guy. Hell yeah. <laughs> <We guessed> it. <laughs> uh, Rad. All right. So next up, we've got Dragon Sin M. Dragon Sin M here says, the sportster, I think. Uh, is something to build off of. If you ask my opinion, it's different and fun. So if you ask me, I think Harley should make a sporty model and we can see if it leaks oil sporty in the same sense of a racing bike. In terms of electric bikes, I can't say much because I have no experience, but batteries need to move up in energy below in size because with what we are starting to go towards, ICE bikes are hopefully going to stay, but if they make an electric bike, they can finally travel farther than an ICE bike, then we might be looking into it a little bit more, but nuclear reactors in between my thighs does not sound too comfy, LOL. Uh, So that's an interesting idea of Harley making like a, uh, he's basically saying like a sports shirt, but for the modern day. Like mm-hmm. a modders kind of bike for a modern kind of rider. What do you they think? don't have one right now. No, the, the new Sportster S is not a modders bike. No, that's a no. Disney. That's a no touch bike. No touch. Yeah. Um. Same with the Pan Am. Just put your for bags sh- on it and be done. Sure. Why, why would you ever get in on a Pan Am? Like, and get in there and do stuff? No way. No. Just uh-huh. put put your screaming eagle eagle can on it. <laughs> get your bags on it and be done. <laughs> get your Harley one piece and be done. Dude, they make a Harley. I one know. Piece. Yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> It's so, oh man. It's, it's like, we got to get you one if we get the long term Pan Am. Yes. You got to be seen. You got to you gotta ride in it. That's all you ever wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, they need something that's as moddable as the Sporty was because the Sporty yeah. was one of those motorcycles where you could theoretically do anything with it. It would yeah. do everything badly, but it would do everything. Yes. Yeah, it would be cool. I mean, Yamaha kind of has it with the MT-07. Yeah. You can do anything with that bike if you really put your mind to it. Yep. It will do anything. You just don't have to think that hard about the Sportster. Yeah. But that's what you get when a bike has run since 1957. Yeah. Basically the same. That's crazy. So. That's crazy. 
Uh, now we got Millennial Malaise, who we tried to talk to earlier, but that didn't work. <laughs> All right. He says, this is from the perspective of someone who has never bought American, but would if given enough reason. I think there's a lot of people like that. Yes. American motorcycles to me have always occupied this weird space of everyday bike that commands a luxury price tag. To me, the appeal of an American motorcycle is similar to that of an Italian bike. There's an element of character and swagger that it has, but it lacks the performance. To me, new American bikes need to make a naked and sport bike with top spec components at the price point that would justify the price tag that they want. The sports dress is a step in the right direction, but Harley needs to go further. Bring the Bronx back, cough, cough, cough. Yeah, totally agree. Mm -hmm. um, I would be shocked if we didn't see a big splashy Bronx announcement at Eichmann this year. I would be, not only would I be shocked, I would be really sad. Yeah, because it's like, that seems like a no-brainer, especially now that they've seen with the Pan Am that it's like, if you do it right, like Millennium Malay said, people are willing to do it. People are willing to jump in. Like, it, okay, if they make the Bronx... This is something that I said again in that video is if they make a sport bike, something that's really good, something fun, something that makes like 120 horsepower yeah. is competitive with that street triple market segment, I'll buy it. Yep. I'll give I'll give up the SMCR for it because I, I'm starting to realize that a single is not great for like the, are you the riding losing that I love do. for your sumo no i adore the supermoto it just but it's so sporty and so yeah. upright and so light yeah it's like everything that i adore about motorcycles but i also love the v-twin grumble yeah you know there's something about that and i love the kind of brawly street fighter look uh if they make it i would have a hard time saying no to it yeah you know so that would also spare your supermoto from living a horrible life as an adventure bike. Mm -hmm. it <laughs> don't, don't do it, Spike. It may still don't live do that it. life. No, don't do it. <laughs> Just put twenty ones on your DRZ. You're you're almost there. You're almost there. We'll talk some sense into you. Who's next? Uh, next up, we got uh, Breadneck. We tried to talk to earlier. All right, Breadneck says, I think what we need most is more affordable entry into American bikes. Yep. Mm -hmm. The used market is great for cheap Harleys, which proves cheap Harleys sell. Give us a Street 500, even though it was a ride for anyone over 5'6", and it'll sell for 6,500 bucks, or Indian DRZ 400. Then he's got Shaquille O'Neal with the spicy hot wing. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. Uh, what? Yeah, what if, uh, what if Harley or Indian made a dual sport to compete with like the CRF 300s and the KLX 300s. That would be cool. Yeah, kind of cool. I'd give I'd give that a shot. To the Harley Supermoto? <laughs> Convert some Harley Super <laughs> Harley dirt bike into a sumo? These these worlds all sound like alternate dimensions we never got to experience, you know? <laughs> like we always talked about where well, there's a world in which Harley became KTM, yeah. you know, and they just did everything. Oh, that would have been crazy. That was the node, man, where the the, the VR, node the, like they instead of uh spinning Buell off into its own sub company. They just rolled it into Harley Davidson. That was the node. Yeah. Um, in that world, the turbo Busa from the factory exists too. Or it's maybe it's that inline six from the sky yeah. or what, what was it? Was it, it wasn't the sky, sky sky bridge? What was that bike called? I can't remember sky something. Yeah. yeah. God, stratosphere. That, stratosphere. The yeah, stratosphere. The flat six. Oh, that looks so cool. No, it was a straight six. Straight six. Yeah. yeah. What a fucking bike that would have been. Yeah. Uh, okay, Vince82 next. All right, Vince says, Aha, this is the great, this is time to put the kids to bed so I can't call, but I can message. I think Harley's on the right track with the Pan Am. I don't agree with the racing point. BMW sucks in World Superbike and is not in GP. I think they need to get more modern bikes. They need color displays, map integration, software updates. They need modern bikes that look like modern bikes. Same for Indian. The FTR is a good bike and the cruisers are modern. Mind... I don't like the color displays on bikes, but they sell. Yeah, so maybe he's saying maybe put some TFT, some more highly integrated features, but the they have that. they have that already now on those bikes, right? They have it on the Sportster S. They got it on the Pan Am. They've got yeah. it on all of the big road. Uh, anything that's got a bat wing has a color display infotainment yeah. center. Uh, I think even some of the gas gauges have color displays now yeah. too. Now, one point I'd like to make, because uh, he's he's saying he's speaking the truth here. BMW does suck in World Superbike, and they're not in GP. But that doesn't stop a bunch of people from simping about the s 1000 R being the best leader bike ever made. Yeah. And I can just pull out the facts. I'm like, how many titles do they have? How many wins? How many podiums mm -hmm. does the S1000 have? <laughs> it's a big 
goose egg. They barely ever get to the top. Uh, but that doesn't stop them from selling a bunch of them, you know? Yeah. It's this complete soulless husk of metal. Yeah. And people just buy it because it's almost oh, BMW. It's so BMW F1000 MLR. Yeah. <laughs> They just um, need to find another R like Honda. Yeah. Where's the other R? And then they also won't get any podiums like Honda. <laughs> <laughs> they, need to, they need to back out the R's. Like the ZX-10, no R's. Tons of podiums. <laughs> tons of wins. R1, just one R. Tons of podiums. Tons of wins. <laughs> Too many R's. There's your problem. We figured it out. All right, who's next? Uh, next up, we got I Am Log, who is really trying to call in. There we go. Oh, no, he's got it right here. All right, I'm Log says, I feel that for HD and Indian to do well, they need to expand their bike catalog. Yep, which they are already doing somewhat with the Pan Am, the FTR. An easy step would be a sport tour, as both already make bikes that can crush interstate miles. Well, that was sport tour. This is the sport touring episode. Oh, man. All, all they would need to do is make sportier models. As having an advantage of being in the US, they know the types of roads here and can make designing those types of bikes easier. The only problem that they would face is the hardcore fans that wouldn't spend their hard-earned pension and social security cash on any bike that's interesting also an indian needs to make the ftr 750 totally agree yes. why is it not here yet and after making a sport tour a sport bike would be easier to achieve for both companies so lots to dissect here but honestly as as reluctant as i am to admit it a sport touring bike would make a lot of sense yep you could make one based on the pan am bike pretty damn easy mm -hmm. i think that they shouldn't try to cater to american audiences i just yeah they, I agree. they need to yeah. they need to be trying like yeah they know the roads here but they know the interstates mm -hmm. that's what they know uh they need to be trying to make motorcycles that'll sell in europe that they can sell in places where they have like cc limits on motorcycles they need to make a bike that would make a bmw or a ducati guy go hmm maybe that's what the Pan Am is doing here. Exactly. And they need to do that. And in they other outsold markets. the BMW. Yep. They Which can do it. They are so proud of that fact. They're I, so proud. I would be too. I go up to bat and I knock off the king off the pedestal. Yeah, I'm going to tell everybody. Yup. So, man, oh man, I don't want to see the sport touring world, but that that may be the way <laughs> we get there. What's happening? We got caught blindsided by the sport touring world. What's the, what's going on? <laughs> Yamcast 66 is cursed to sport touring. <laughs> so cursed. Uh, next up is the Lava Melon. The Lava Melon, he says, I would like to see a smaller version of the FTR. If they just cut the CCs in half and maybe made it an inch or two shorter and also bring the price down a little bit, Harley should also release the Bronx, but I couldn't afford it. Excuse me. The thing is that we don't have a lot of different American bikes. We have cruisers, and now a sport slash naked, and now an adventure. But we don't have any dirt bikes or super sports or even just a good beginner bike. I feel like everybody's saying the same thing, lol. If Harley built something like the Spart 701 and I could afford it, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Hell to be yeah. honest, one thing I'm thinking of now, too, is, uh, you know, Harley and Indian, I think it would be kind of a, be a bold move for them, but why not make a different configuration for their engines? Yeah. You don't have to only do V-twins, no. you know? Like, KTM makes twins, both parallel, V-twins, and singles, mm -hmm. you know? Take and a page out of that book. They make one V4. Granted, Triumph literally only does triples, right? No, they do parallel twins. In the Bonnie. Yeah, that's right. That's fair. Um, and I forgot <laughs> about those. They do a lot of parallel twins. <laughs> I forgot about those. Um, I actually, when I was writing one of the lists, I completely forgot the Bonneville line exists. <laughs> when we're talking about Triumph in that one list, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Some of these lines I got to go back and delete. <laughs> Yeah. But I actually, I think that there's something here that is important. He says, I feel like everybody's saying the same thing. Yeah. Why do we know this stuff, but Harley and Indian seem to not? I think they know it, but they don't have the kind of momentum and the wherewithal to just do it because they're, like we've said, they're a little afraid of that diehard segment that they've catered to for mm -hmm. it seems like millennia at this point right yeah they feel like they're this immovable wall of customers that will just vanish if they make a sport bike which is just not true no and you gotta find new customers you man. have to like i it's it's hard to find people our age that's genuinely interested and can afford a friggin cvo or something oh my man. god like dude get out of here like, like i saw i saw a fat bob going down the high uh, down the road yesterday and i was like that's a really sweet looking bike oh wait a minute it's eighteen thousand dollars never mind yeah. yep uh if yeah. i'm gonna spend 18 grand i'm gonna get a super duke yeah 100 percent. 
I get it. Or Toronto. ZH2. ZH2. Save yourself some coin, too. Yep. No, the ZH2 is about 18, right? Yeah, 17, 18. 17. Oh, that's a hell of a bike. That's <laughs> such a good bike. I love that bike so much. <laughs> bike of the year, ZH2. Honestly, it could be. Yeah, we got to make that video. Uh, but that's going to wrap up our call in if you can call it that uh, discussion for today about American motorcycles we hope you enjoyed this kind of different format that we kind of got forced into a corner with because we had some technical difficulties and we appreciate it if you stuck around and enjoyed it we're now going to move on to the meme contest of the week let's do it Alrighty, folks, welcome to the meme contest of the week. This week, we are poking fun at Honda. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we chose Honda, but we just decided to just dick around with Honda for a little bit. I mean, the, the CBR wrapped up yesterday. That's true. So Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, so we told the boys that they could make whatever kind of memes they wanted to. No holds barred here yep. for the memes. Uh, we were just voting them on what, creativity and uh, funniness? And creativity and funniness, the usual ones. Easy uh, peasy. I have quality, but that should be creativity creativity there we go okie doke uh and the first up we have hack jockey who i believe this is a copy pasta okay uh honda gaiken kyogo is a company forever intertwined with the career of director ishiro honda no relation a year after american bombs stopped falling on tokyo soichiro honda Cobbled together his first functional motorcycle from the smoldering ruins of Imperial Japan. Not even Admiral Yamamoto could have foreseen that the great conflict would awake more sleeping giants than the USA. Despite Godzilla-induced disruptions, Honda grew to become the world's largest producers of underpowered commuter bikes by the first appearance of Rodin. Five years later, with the arrival of the giant irritated Leopadera, Mothra, Honda again adapted to changing consumer demands. Now dealing with Godzilla, Mothra, 30 impending sequels, and the rise of anime porn, Honda engineers reluctantly built the CX-500. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a copy poster from Godzilla, I assume? Right, from the from a film or something? No, so these are all Godzilla bad guys. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Rodan, Mothra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Honda finally had a functional motorcycle with better than even chance of outrunning Ghidorah. With the assistance of crappy film editing and weak storylines, sea lions were temporarily free from the menace posed by Matango, At- Atragon, and Dogora. Importation of Honda's motorcycle skyrocketed the Americans. Nice brown nosing with the red, white, and blue paint schemes, by the way. <laughs> Soon, Honda mated Japan's passion for plastic consumer goods with the new multi-cylinder motor sofa. The gold wing was born. <laughs> plastic, steel, and alloys were now being blended at a frenzied pace as the vaunted U.S. military lost its enthusiasm for bombing by air. America grew proficient at bombing on the highway. A Harley is a Harley. Not even tennis-oriented AMF could put more bounce into the vintage v-twin company (laughs) that's a good line finally the united states realized it was hopelessly unprepared to meet the expectations of the motorcycling audience out of desperation hollywood acquired the movie rights to ishiro honda's life work now unencumbered by historical and cultural stigmas the united states was finally able to compete if only at the box office thanks soichiro and ishiro honda Wow. <laughs> this was kind of a cool little like blurb of Honda's uh, coming to be. Yeah, that, that was an interesting like, uh, what's the word? Uh, origin story. Yeah. You know? A very interesting format, too. I wonder if it is a copy poster, if it was just kind of like in a style, you know? Yeah. W- whatever it is, I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. Yeah, that, that was good. All right. So, creativity. This, this one's off the I, wall. I, I like it. It's super different. I would give it an eight and a half. It was, I think pre- so, it was pretty yeah. creative. And funniness here. It had some great lines. It had some really good one-liners. I think a seven and a half for me. I didn't get like a big belly chuckle out of it, but it also is more like witty than yeah. funny, you know? A good seven and a half. That's a yeah. solid 16. That's a good, that's a good right score. There. Yeah. Now, we, mm, excuse me. We got Choco Cow next. Hey, everybody. My name's Steve Irwin, and today I found a very, very rare creature. A Honda NC700X. <laughs> now, these right here are the only indigenous to the middle-aged American dads. See here, the top box on the back. You see that? That's a telltale sign that an older gentleman rides one of these. <laughs> also, you can see the Toro windscreen and the handguard turn this bike into an exceptionally nerdy machine. Now, Honda 
only knows how to make motorcycles that'll put you to sleep. <laughs> Just like this one here. But I'm, I'm about half ready to go to bed. Just look at it. So, let's get a little closer. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. The scent. It smells like a dad just from the set. It's dang it. Oh my goodness. It's even got a front. Let's back up. I'll stand any longer. It might get angry at me. <laughs> Very like good. One. Very good. Very creative. That was fun. I love how he was like, I'm half falling asleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> so creativity here that was good that was good uh i i think that i think an eight at I least eight, right yeah and funniness here i think an, i think an eight and a half i think an eight and a half yeah, yeah. I, I got a good chuckle out of it that was nice that's 16 and a half our new front runner you got some good scores today y'all brought the heat next one is the dad With this guy right here. So, do you know what this photo is? I, it looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger yelling at somebody. That's me. No way, really? Yeah, so that's a photo from my Instagram, because I dressed up as a crab for Halloween. <laughs> and I had a lot of fun being a crab, but yeah, that's a photo that I put on my Instagram, my stories. <laughs> but thank you for thinking I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Look close, it is me, I promise you. Yeah, I guess I can see it. <laughs> All right, so uh, the dad wrote, In a fury from motorcycling mediocrity, the devil is enraged at the performance of the machines on two wheels which he designed in his own image. He has grown tired of mere mortals riding his masterpiece astray. No rider can wield the almighty steeds of red with rage and precision necessary to eliminate all that is good and bright. Excuse me. The beast is forced to take matters into his own hooves. The demon ponders on which line will navigate the turns ahead with superior ferocity. Finally, it has become clear that none other than the offspring of Satan himself can ignite the fire to carry the brand of Honda onward. Behold, the fruit of the fallen angel's loins emerges to dominate. Who dare challenge? Look, witness the birth of the most defiled creature ever to sit astride a motorcycle. <laughs> 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 very interesting this very one. we are getting some peculiar memes today i i like it uh people on chat already hitting me up with the saying that i look like idubs i get that all the time they're like you look like the the gay guy but red not green because you remember he had the he was like dressed in a green morph suit and he jumps down and he's like i'm gay you don't remember that? Nope. It's like a really popular meme. All right, whatever. <laughs> Where, come on, man. You're an internet person. You got to know I dubs and his memes. Come on. <laughs> nope. It's just kneel right on. over the head. Uh, okay, so for the dad here, creativity. We could maybe we could maybe clip that photo of me in all red there and use that for something. It's a pretty oh, yeah. good react image. <laughs> <laughs> creativity. Um, Make another yam mask. <laughs> well, hold on. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. This, you guys aren't ready for this. This, oh no. <laughs> Why are you putting 17s on your supermoto? Why are you turning your adventure bike into a supermoto? You got that backwards, Big M. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a cursed object. Yeah. I love that it exists. <laughs> It's so big on camera. The camera's gonna just auto focus on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. Oh man. Anyways, he's gonna rest with me right here. <laughs> <laughs> the MCAT 66 is cursed. What are you gonna do? Just, just, it's just, come on. <laughs> we gotta roll with the punches now. Yeah, you gotta, I'm gonna make sure it's not glaring. There we go. Look at that. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> All right. I see it in the reflection of the glass over there, and it's really freaking me out. Yep. Yeah. All right. So the creativity for this one, I would rate, I I think a, I think a seven. I didn't quite understand it as yeah, much. I think a seven as well. And funniness here. I think a six. I think a six. A six. Yeah. That's 13 for the dad. It also I, wasn't really related to Honda. It was tangentially related to Honda, so I kind of feel like I had to dock it a little bit. You know? Yeah. So next up, we've got Gunpoint Llama with, I believe he's got a video for us. 
Oh, nope. Just a uh, Honda Rebel meme. Oof. Spicy meme. Honda Rebel for the guy who didn't research anything else. Youch. Kind of true, though. Yeah. Kind of true. Those I've, old Rebels are man. such dogs. The old 250 Rebels. Yeah. It's like you, you don't have to live like this anymore. No. Nope. You, know? you really don't have to live like this anymore. Simple and effective meme. Taking it back to the old school. So creativity here. I think a uh, I think a five. It's top text, bottom text. Yep. Pretty pretty boilerplate. And funniness. I think uh, a six. Uh, pretty funny, you know. Yeah. All right. Decent. And eleven. Next up, we've got Vince eighty two. I think it's a video. <laughs> okay. You could have been the very best. No one ever was To beat them all was your real test To own them was your cause So you traveled across the land Wow Winning far and wide Teaching Dovi to understand <laughs> The power of pneumatic full screen <laughs> And we never was you and them My guess I know it was destiny My guess Oh but you're no one friend It's our title to defend <laughs> Marquez gonna win them all What a smart face <laughs> That you showed at every race You over-talented piece of <laughs> Not Marquez <laughs> Win them all Win them all yeah. Wow <laughs> I think my favorite line was teaching Dovi to understand. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was great. The, the, the fact that he went in and wrote the whole thing is pretty, pretty good. And sang it too. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Uh, so for Vince 82. I feel like the chorus could have been Mark Marquez. Mm-hmm. The syllable works a little better, you yep. know? Uh, pretty high creativity. Wrote all of his lyrics, put it all together. I think an eight. An eight. Yeah. And funniness. I think an eight as well. Yeah. Yeah. Which means we're going to have a runoff for second place as it stands Ooh, right now. True. Next up, we've got Jellied Monster. Great username. Crommel <laughs> Wing. <laughs> <laughs> Jellied Monster, who is what appears to be a, a real screenshot from the Honda website where you're selecting your colors and your trim of the new Grom Wing. <laughs> When you really want it all, you want mini bike fun, but touring bike practicality. I gotta believe that there's like a Grom Wing mod out for there sure, somewhere. For sure, M- Groms have just been molested into everything under the sun. Yep. You know, if the Gromagale exists, <laughs> the Grom Wing can exist. <laughs> oh, That's man. great. It's actually a pretty half decent shop too. It's a it's a good little shop. Yeah, it kind of looks real. mm Hmm. All right, so for Jellied Monster, uh, creativity. I think this one is a either a six and a half or a seven. I'm between the two. What do you think? I'm thinking a seven. The shop was pretty good. The shop good. is pretty good. Yeah, let's do a seven. And funniness. You did a point seven. I did a point seven. <laughs> seven. It's been a while since we've given someone just like a flat zero. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a minute. Whitney now curates the memes a little bit, so we, yep. we don't have zeros in anymore. Maybe we can have her throw in a zero every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Whitney, get the, Whitney, get the worst meme on the AMCAT. <laughs> Pull up these horrible memes. I'm going to roast your memes. Um, that would just be mean if it's just like one be- a week that's just a zero. <laughs> just be like... Our, like you Someone get- gets auto-banned, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh funniness i think is uh i think a six and a half i think like a six i didn't really laugh that's true it was kind of just kind of like yeah i think a six okay that's fair 13 uh next up we got magic toaster it's gonna be electric bikes Mm-hmm. honda doesn't have an electric bike not you're yet. right they don't <laughs> an inside joke here from a it looks like a totally burnt up Goldwing. <laughs> friends don't let friends write Hondas. Then a screen cap for me on Discord saying Hondas aren't safe. So the story behind the Hondas aren't safe thing, you might say that I it looks like I just dropped that on Discord, but um it actually was a dude that out of nowhere on the main chat 
Someone was talking about Honda bikes, and he did, he did just say, Hondas aren't safe. And then disappeared. And then just left the server forever. Um, <laughs> no one could understand why he said that or what he meant. Kind of like the dude that just said, nitrogen is the answer to this problem, and then just left. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's such a good meme that you can use for all kinds of things. Um, so good. Good inside Discord meme there. Love it. All right. So for Magic Toaster, creativity. It's a, it's a simple format, relatively mm-hmm. creative. I think a take a six and a half for a the creativity and there. And funniness. Pretty funny. Uh, how about a seven? A seven. Yeah. Got a decent chuckle. That is a 13 and a half. Next up, we got Eerie Bubble. I'm going to put this down. You sick of holding it? Yeah. Sick of holding your own head? <laughs> Says, when you think cyberpunk is cool, but scooters are your thing, and then it's that really weird Honda... It's like the, the NMO4? I thought it was the DN something. Do they, they don't make that bike still, right? They used to? I think they still make it in Japan. It was like supposed to be yeah. the Akira bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it have foot forward control? Yes. Oh, what? Mm-hmm. It's got <laughs> boards. Oh, man. And it's a V-twin. That's so strange. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Fair assessment of that bike that we kind of. Oh, it's, I think it says right there on the DNO on the head. Four. Yeah, DNO one. DNO DNO one. That's what it is. Yeah. What an ugly motorcycle, dude, dude! It's so ugly. It's like I feel like Honda either makes beautiful bikes or butt ugly bikes. <laughs> yeah. Like their their CB bikes are really cool. Like the CB six fifty, like mm-hmm. super good looking bike. This thing, the NT eleven hundred, is like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Like, the only fully fared bike you should make is the Fireblade. Yep. All the other ones, no. What, where was the Honda that made the early CB900F with the, like, oh. transfer, the two transfer case situation? Yeah. We need that Honda back. I know. The one that was coked out and doing <laughs> wrong. They're like, oval pistons! <laughs> You're like, all right, <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, so, creativity here for Eerie Bubble. I think this one is... I got four or five. I'm thinking it's, like a four. It's, it's just pretty kinda, low effort. Yeah, yeah. four. Uh, funniness. Uh, I think the funniness here is pretty low as well. How about a four? Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Wicked Monkey with an actual <laughs> monkey meme. Here we go. <laughs> I really like this one. It says just because he can ride one doesn't mean you should. Honda <laughs> Monkey two fifty. <250. laughs> And they're like a smug monkey just kind of looking up. <laughs> it's kind of like, it reminds me of like a PSA ad or something. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of like an old wartime ad or something. Yup. Yeah, I, I feel like I should use this whenever someone's like, oh, should I get a Grom? And I'm like, just because he can ride one doesn't mean you should. <laughs> I, so, I th- if I'm not mistaken, the monkey is the exact same Grom engine, but it's even heavier and even slower. Yeah, it's a total boomer cash grab, man. Like, that's mm-hmm. all the monkey is. They were just like, oh, shit, we can just take the Grom and, like, make it look like that old bike and boomers will buy it? Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, that's what we're going to do. Now, they did the same with the Trail 125. They're like, oh, what? We can do this for this bike, too? But well, there's actually human beings that we know in the server who have 125s. Yeah, it's that guy that never shuts up about it. Yep. <laughs> He'll let you. <laughs> yeah. He... How, do you know, how do you know if somebody has a, uh, <laughs> a trail, trail 125? 125? They'll tell you. They will. Uh, okay, so for Wicked Monkey, creativity here. I, I kind of liked it. I think a six and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It was, was kind of goofy. And funniness. Pretty funny. I think a six. A six. Yeah. And last but not least, we got Little Foozy Bert. Good username. With a video. Estoy súper emocionado, pero emocionado entiendo porque no sé si te ha salido como todo lo que has vivido en estos nueve meses que solo lo sabes tú. Sí, es, soy una persona que, que me gusta mantenerlo por dentro eh, y no, no expresarlo mucho, pero, pero he entrado al box y me, me he derrumbado y bueno, ha sido... <risa> Ha sido duro, muy duro. Más de lo que imaginamos. Ha sido duro. Excellent. Excellent. That was really good. 
I just that was so well timed. Like I risk it all, and this is what they just starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful beautiful well done well done god damn it that was really good <laughs> oh man yeah <laughs> creativity here nine that, yep. was, that was quite good and funniness ten yep very funny that Loved was it. A, that was sudden come from behind right there <laughs> very very good wow well done little foozy bert you have won yourself first place here on the Yamcast with that wonderfully funny meme very good Second place goes to Chaco Cal. Uh, yes, it does. And now we have a runoff for third place between Hack Jockey and Vince Eighty Two. Yes, I uh, have to remind myself of their means. Hack Jockey had the the Godzilla thing, right? Yeah, uh, he wrote. If I find God, it went. Nope, up nope. there. <laughs> Come on, Spike. I'm just pushing <laughs> buttons over here. <laughs> so, Hack Jockey wrote this one. Okay. And then what and was then Vince 82's? Vince 82. How to make a motorcycle. Uh, oh, the, this one, the Mark Marquez song. The Mark Marquez song? Yep. I think the Mark Marquez song takes it. What do you think? I think so too. Yeah. It had the little lyric video and everything else. I, yep. I like that a lot. So, that is third for Vince 82. And just put fourth here, and then do it's, we have? It's always funny how sometimes the simplest and dumbest memes just take it, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's just too good, man. <laughs> it was so well done. So well done. Uh, okay, and then just in case we've got a, a fifth place, and we're all set. Perfect, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning to a bit of a, a cursed yam cast here. Uh, <laughs> just stare deeply into my visage and you will forget this ever happened for Yamcast 66 and all the weirdness that happened in this one. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned because in, in three Yamcast time, we will do Yamcast 69, 69, which we're cooking up something special for. We don't quite know yet, but uh, if y'all have any ideas, link us down below and tell us in the comments for Yamcast 69. Catch you in the next one. See you later. <laughs> This cursed Yamcast is over. All right, look, you don't have to lie to me. If you had time for one Yam new video all the way to the end, you probably have time for another one. You should probably just click this link and watch the video right over here. I promise it's going to be good. You won't regret it. Seriously, you should just, just click it. I'm sure it's good. We only make good stuff around here. You should, you should just watch it. Why are you still here?